Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Caden Cleveland here with the Oklahoma Senate, and you're joining us for another episode of OK Senate on Deck with Senator Greg Treat, the President Pro Tem of the Senate. Senator, thank you so much for being here this week. Yeah, look forward to the conversation. Absolutely. So uh, just to uh, jump right into it, and uh, just to recap for all those who may have not listened to the podcast last week. Uh, Shame on you. Exactly, Shame right? You. Thank yes. you very much. Yeah. yeah. So last week, we talked a lot about uh, deadline week uh, for uh, all the Senate bills that are in the Senate right now, and this week was the uh, deadline for uh, for all bills to be heard in committee. Um, just to kind of turn it over to you, uh, how'd this week go, and uh, was it was it a very productive week? You kind of tell us a little. little yeah, bit it was about an it. intense week. You know, mm-hmm. it started off Monday with HHS and dealing with Senate Bill 195 aimed mm-hmm. at protecting unborn life. Right. And, uh, Wednesday of the week, we we passed constitutional carry, uh, something we passed the session before, but was vetoed by the previous governor. Right. Uh, this governor didn't waste any time, signed it. First bill he's signed into law. He signed, we passed it Wednesday afternoon. He signed it Wednesday afternoon. Nice. It won't go into effect until November, uh, but it, it's a long time coming. And I tell you, Senator David is doing an excellent job running nice. the floor. We've been very efficient. Committee chairs have, have run a lot of bills through. We've mm-hmm. we've have vehicles or, or legislation alive in all of our four priority areas that we talk about every week. And right. so Senate Republicans are on track. Uh, we had a bipartisan vote, so Senate Republicans and Democrats uh, voted for, mm-hmm. not all, obviously, but all the no votes were Democrats, but there were a couple of yes votes from the, the Democrat side, too, on, on constitutional carry. Right. Things are clicking along really well. Very busy week. Only, I think, one committee went to about 6.30 on Wednesday. So Yeah, uh, and it was appropriations, though. I mean, that's it, kind of expected, right? It, it, it is. <laughs> uh, you know, it's expected to go even later. So yeah, that's it, right. it just speaks to how much work my members have already done. Uh, prior to deadline week. A right. lot of times we're all procrastinators some way, shape, or form, uh, and uh, there's just a lot of bills to go That's through. Right. But I, I'm very proud of the work that both Senator David has done and then the committee chairs. You mentioned appropriation. Senator Thompson, I think, had 60-some-odd bills yes. mm-hmm. uh, that they had to consider yesterday, and they, they handled them very well. That's right. So kind of piggybacking off of what you mentioned uh, as far as uh, the four points that we we mentioned pretty much every week uh, here on the podcast, the four uh, Senate GOP agenda points, um, one of the main ones that I was surprised about that, well, not surprised about, but it, it caught me a little bit off guard was uh, Senate Bill 1, Loft, when you ran that in committee, unanimous vote. Uh, can you kind of speak to that a little bit and what the progress yeah. of that is? I think it speaks to the fact that Republicans and Democrats alike realize we need more information. Right. When we're making our budgeting decisions. So Senate Bill 1, like I said, passed unanimously. It's a bill that creates a legislative office of fiscal transparency, allows us to have real numbers and to, to track the programs that we pass to make sure that the money we spend is being maximized. Extremely important concept. Speaker has a vehicle on the House side, mm-hmm. too, that, that passed uh, out of his committee process. So we both got uh, legislation going that way. I think there's a lot of unification on this that, that between the Unification is probably the wrong word, but there's a lot of momentum behind it. Right, gotcha. Uh, also passed uh, the five bills dealing with state agencies, the top five right, appropriated yeah. agencies, mm-hmm. uh, to allow the governor to hire and fire the directors there. Uh, Senate version did away with the boards. Uh, it's something that we believe strongly in in the, in the Republican uh, caucus in the Oklahoma State Senate. So we advanced those measures. Uh, we also advanced measures on... Uh, you know, some diversion programs on our criminal justice side. Right. So we're, we're tracking along education. Uh, la- the previous week, we right. passed uh, the five-day school week, and that, that still is in progress, and we're still negotiating some of the details. So all four points of the, the agenda that mm-hmm. we laid out are, are trucking along really well. That's awesome. Okay. So kind of looking ahead here, so since all of these bills have passed out of committee, the next step, I guess, would be for them to be on the Senate floor. Um, is that – walk us through what the next few weeks are going to look like as, as those, I guess, are. Yeah, we have a couple of weeks to get those off the floor. So the first four weeks are spent getting bills that originated in the Senate mm-hmm. out of Senate committees. Uh, and then the next couple of weeks will be about getting those bills off the Senate floor. Uh, same process is happening across the rotunda in the House. Gotcha. Okay. So after the bills are heard on the floor, at that point they go over to the, they go to the House. Uh, vice versa, House bills come over here. Um, I, I guess uh, beyond that, as far as just the uh, progress, I kind of want to check in every once in a while and just see how uh, optimistic you still are about how everything's going. Is is everything still? Uh, I mean, your attitude towards just all the progress that, that's being made still pretty consistent. Yeah, we have. You know, there's some disagreements over details, right. but the destination 
uh, there's widespread agreement on. Great. And so as long as we all have the de same destination in mind, I'm, I remain optimistic. Great. If anyone ever changes where the destination is, you'll, you'll hear me be a little more pessimistic. But uh, I, I think uh, things are, are going very well on all fronts. Mm -hmm. um, the governor, like I said, signed constitutional carry. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be taking up medical marijuana, uh, the, right. the so-called unity bill mm -hmm. that came out of the working group over the interim. So some things are already going to the governor's desk. This is very early in the process, but it just speaks to, to how much cooperation there has been uh, and really shows how efficient we can be uh, when there's agreement. Right. Well, Senator, we're about out of time here, but uh, I'm gonna turn over to you. Is there anything, anything else that you wanted to share before we sign off? No, it's going to be a busy next couple of weeks. Every, every uh, different iteration is, is busy. We believe strongly in government accountability mm -hmm. and trying to get the governor actually in control of the executive branch. So you'll see us talking a lot about that. We, you know, Governor Stitt, when he was running for election and when he uh, gave his state of the state, talked about how important it is that we don't concentrate power in these unelected uh, board members uh, to make decisions in state agencies. Mm -hmm. There's a real disconnect between whoever the governor's agenda is and oftentimes what the executive branch uh, aims to do right. uh, because of these boards and commissions. And, and, you know, frankly, the boards and commissions are just supposed to be following the laws that the legislature passes right. uh, and executing those laws. And we've had a disconnect there as well. So our caucus remains committed to that. We remain committed to sanctity of life. We remain committed to legislative uh, uh, budget uh, transparency. Yeah and criminal justice, and you're going to hear me week after week talking about those and hopefully sharing good news about their continued progress. Great. A lot of very important topics going on right now. A uh, very positive movement, I think, for, for our state. So I'm excited. Th Senator, thank you so much for joining us this week. Uh, and thank you guys for, for listening. If you uh, want to listen to any more of our podcasts, they're all available at our webpage at protim.oksenate.gov. And of course, like every week, if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer directly here on the podcast, you can uh, uh, email us at ondeck at oksenate.gov. And uh, beyond that, Senator, do you have anything else? Yeah, you started off by saying those of you that didn't listen, Listen every week. That's uh, right. Send us questions. That's right. Uh, uh, we, and if you want us to go into more detail on things, mm. uh, we will. Just send us questions and just appreciate the opportunity every week so. to sit down with you. Senator, thank you so much. And I guess we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.